this guy here came out pretty nicely all in all. I had enough left over to do half of the left and the right side. I'm probably just going to put some caulking in here to keep bugs from crawling back in that area. You can almost see light through. There's a couple of places where there's there right, the little gap of light right there. You know, so there's definitely gaps that go all the way through. I don't want bugs hanging out in there, so I'm just going to put some caulking in. But it's solidly attached to the drawer here. And then there's this guy. Just have to sand it down. Glue it right down here so I can put this catch iron for my latch. And then my drawer will basically be done and the whole thing will be ready to take all the hardware off again and paint. Well, acrylic caulk is a lot easier to apply than epoxy, only because it comes in a nice tube like this. Let me tell you, if somebody figured out a way to get epoxy into a caulking tube, I would buy it. So that has no structural support. It is simply to seal that region in there to keep bugs out. And I'm going to paint over the top of it when I paint the rest of the drawer. Mixed up 15 grams of epoxy resin with about three tablespoons, or sorry, three teaspoons of milled fiber to bulk it up a bit. And I have well more than I need here. This is going to squirt out everywhere, so I'm going to try to get it spread out evenly over the entire surface. All right, let's see if I can keep from gluing my clamp to the thing here. So the goal here is just to get a lot of that milled fiber and epoxy between these two pieces and basically cover the entire surface and bridge any gaps between those two surfaces. So I think that's going to hold very, very well. So I made about three times what I really needed there and I just threw the rest of it around this bottom corner where some of the foam was exposed, just as a little bit of reinforcement there. I got the mommy and me scale out. And this drawer, with all of its hardware attached, but no paint, weighs 9 pounds. Now obviously there's a little bit of the drawer left over, drawer rails left over on that. The drawer face is exactly this thickness here, so we basically want that to be right there. After I made sure everything fit when mounted on the pontoon, I have taken all the hardware off in preparation for painting. I have removed all of the hardware from the drawer and the doors, and now I just need a little bit of sanding on these areas where I put down epoxy paint, um, because right now it's super smooth, which is nice, except paint won't stick to that super smooth surface. I want it to be nice and matte finish so that the paint will stick to it.
All right, I have one last little bit here. Some epoxy rolled around here, probably when this thing was set up upside down. And um, I probably said, oh, I'll get that later. And well, it's later now, so I have a couple of drips here and here. I don't have anything on this edge, so I obviously sanded there and this edge here, but just didn't go around the bottom to get that. So I have to get all those drips down, and then it'll be painting time. The air is still, relative humidity is only 75%, and I have everything set up and ready to spray. One can of primer, I got most of the drawer and the door fronts and all of the bench seat and under the bottom of the bench seat and around the sides, but not the back. So I've moved this inside. I'm going to get more primer. I'm going to paint the back and then I will sand everything down and then I will paint everything that I can reach here, basically not underneath. And that'll be a second coat of primer and hopefully at that point it'll be ready for regular paint. I have the back of the doors, the very back of the drawer, and the back of the bench seat here to paint now that I have another container of primer. There are some areas here where if I want this to be smooth, I'm going to have to get out the Bondo to kind of go over some of these areas. Alright, first most common mistake, not needing the cream hardener. It sounds pretty liquidy in there, so no amount of kneading may help. But if you don't need it, it's definitely going to be liquid. It's kicked. Boom. Done. Bondo is higher 
than my holes. So when I sand the whole thing down, hopefully it'll be mostly smooth. I hit that with 80 grit and then 320 grit. You can see high points are fiberglass here and primer paint there and Bondo there. So we're going to cover the whole thing again with another coat of primer. And there's a few little dips here and there, but uh, it's good enough for me.